Why News with Angelo Castro III, William Theo, and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. The subcommittee level of the lower house of Congress has approved the proposal to amend the existing anti-hazing law. Grace Cassin will tell us why. The lawmakers are expediting the passage of amendments they seek to implement in our Public Act 8049 or anti-hazing law. House Bill No. 3467 prohibits the conduct of physical and psychological forms of hazing. It also mandates the regulation of initiation rights in all schools, community-based fraternities and sororities, as well as similar organizations. The proposed amendment also requires existing and new fraternity and sorority groups to register in schools and in local government units. There will also be monitoring of initiation rights both for school and community-based fraternities, sororities and organizations to see to it that no hazing is conducted. Under the proposal, school officials may also be held liable in the event hazing rights are conducted within their respective campuses, especially when the result is death and serious physical injury. It may uh, uh, enjoin no, these school uh, heads to really, no, to really uh, make sure that these activities are, re are really regulated because otherwise uh, they will not do anything and they will keep on pleading innocence no, to, that, to those activities and they will always go scot-free. The said proposed law is among the priority bills of the House of Representatives that lawmakers target to pass at the soonest possible time to prevent more death due to hazing like what happened to U.S. law student Horacio Castillo III. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. Former Senator Joey Lina, the principal author of the anti-hazing law, admits some provisions of the law are indeed confusing to the public. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. Parts of the Republic Act 8049 or the Anti-Hazing Law of 1995 were detailed in the program Get It Straight with Daniel Razon. One of them is Section 2 that seems to allow hazing or initiation rights provided that the school was notified prior to the act. But the primary author of the law, former Senator Joey Lina, says going through the other parts of the law, one will understand that the law actually prohibits any act of violence. Maliwanag din, the mm. se second sentence. Yes. Na yung notice na ipapadala sa eskwelahan mm -hmm. ay dapat magkaroon uh, ng commitment, commitment uh -huh. undertaking mm -hmm. na walang physical harm or, uh, or walang physical violence nagagawin during initiation rites. Hmm. Lina also notes that the interpretation of the law should not be based solely in the title but further explanations should also be considered. The former lawmaker explains that the title of the anti-hazing law is not part of the original version of the bill he filed before. Yung naging title, uh, inadapt yung title ng House of Representatives. Which is anti-hazing law. Regulating. Hindi po, Regu regulating. regulating. Hazing and other forms of initiation rights. Kasi dun pa din, may, medyo misleading na rin oh. yata yun. Well, Kasi uh, regulating. Uh, ang regulating, ang pumapasok sa utak natin, pag sinabing regulating, Pwede. parang do's and don'ts oh, lang. Oh, regulate uh, mo lang. Oh. Oh, pero, uh, Pwede. ang regulation also means law, Statute, edict, pronouncement. Synonymous naman po yung mga word na yan eh. Sinasabi ng Supreme Court. May konteksto yung batas. Uh, may konteksto ang batas. Huwag ka dun sa title na katingin. Mm -hmm. Basahin mo yung buong batas. Mm -hmm. It's the body of the law mm -hmm. that will explain what the law is all about. Attorney Lina also agrees that there are some provisions of the anti-hazing law that Congress should pay attention if it plans to amend it. Dito po, lumilitaw, wala din po yung psychological eh. Mm -hmm. Dito sa section 2. Physical, no physical violence lang. Uh, ngayon, ibabalik nyo ngayon doon sa penalty. Sa penalty. Eh, pero hindi ho ba dapat yung nakaspecify din dito sa section 2 na to na as provided in the penalties uh, or as para to give reference hmm. to what you really mean dito ho sa ano na to, sa uh, section na ito na maire-refer ninyo doon sa ibang mga provisions na magpapaliwanag na kasama po itong lahat ng ito. Well, isang, isang bagay yan na uh, dapat bigyan ng pansin ng uh, Kongreso mm -mm. habang nire-revisit itong batas na ito. Ito ba ang nilagay, nilagay ninyo sa batas nyo? 
uh, yung sa original bill na ipinail ko Opo. at approved by the Senate, okay. wala po ito kasi. Itong ah. section 1, section 2, section 3. Ay, ganun. Ito ang definition nung, uh, diretso po yung definition dun sa Senate dun bill. Dun sa ginawa ninyong sa ginawa version. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, Use and Rescue, Quezon City. The principal author of the anti-hazing law opposes the proposal for its repeal. Ray Pelayo is back to tell us why. Binasa ko yung mga panukalang batas ngayon na uh, Daniel. Eh, repeal. Yung uh, tatlong panukalang batas, repeal. Former Senator Joey Lina fears a repeal in the anti-hazing law would result to dismissal of cases or release of convicts accused of violations of the said law. This is what he believes after hearing of a proposed repeal on Republic Act 8049 or the anti-hazing law of 1995. Lina said there are around 300 suspects who are still at large since the law's enactment 22 years ago. He said that a repeal will undermine the investigations in these cases as there will be no law to punish the criminals. Kung i-repeal ito ngayong batas na kung saan ay na-convict ang isang nagkasala, Bravo ay maaari po siyang mapalaya. Mapalaya na. O yung, at yung may mga kaso na, uh -huh. eh, madidismiss na yung kaso. Dahil doon sila kinasuhan sa batas na yon. Sa batas na yon. Lina recalled that his term in Senate was over when the anti-hazing law was enacted and 90% of his original version was adopted. He proposes to the current Congress some possible amendments to the law and such as the inclusion of aggravating circumstances For instance, when a suspect is intoxicated or under the influence of illegal drugs. He also suggests to the Senate to adopt his version on the definition of hazing which directly and totally prohibits the act. Principal suspects may be penalized with life imprisonment while co-accused may receive reduced penalty of up to 4 years in jail even if the injury inflicted to the victim is just minor. The law said anyone present in the hazing site may be considered an accomplice though there are ways for him or her to get acquitted. Unless yung tao did something to prevent the commission of hazing. Ah, okay. Parang like umawat ka, nag-report ka. Eh, report mo sa police. Uh, oh, na may nangyayaring ganito. Inawat mo talaga. Tinigil mo. Mm. Ano? At uh, kung mapatunayan mo yun, Maring mare na tanggapin ang usgado. Also, the former senator wishes that authorities will follow the proper procedure of filing of cases against violators of the anti-hazing law so they will be penalized. Meron ng isang huwes mm -hmm. na tinanggal ng Korte Suprema for ignorance of the anti-hazing law. Mm -hmm. So, are we sure that our judges are properly uh, aware and knowledgeable about the law? Mm -hmm. Nakagather ka ng evidence, ang pulis, ipinail sa piskal. Yung piskal naman, mali-mali yung informasyon na ginawa. Mm -mm. Nag-dismiss tuloy ng, ng korte. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. Several senators are considering their proposal to just amend some provisions of the anti-hazing law instead of revoking the entire law. Nel Maribuhok will tell us why. Five proposed laws on hazing are filed in the Senate. Three of the proposals aim to revoke the 22-year-old anti-hazing law of 1995 authored by former Senator Joey Lina. Senators Juan Miguel Subiri and Minga Chalian are among the senators who filed bills on hazing. However, Senator Subiri says the Senate might just pass some amendments on the provisions of the existing anti-hazing law as suggested by Attorney Joey Lina. Ang pakiusap ni Senator um, Joey Lina Anyway, uh, uh, nandiyan naman yung key provisions, baka pwedeng mar-amend lang. So it's possible that the committee may just come out with amendments to the anti-hazing law. And the amendments will of course change the title uh, from regulating to prohibiting. Under the Senate version, senators might also widen the coverage of the penalty of reclusion perpetua or lifetime imprisonment. With the amended version, even officers of an organization with members who conducted hazing rights will face lifetime imprisonment under the revised penal code. This is although the officers have no participation in the hazing right. That's one of the key amendments that we're placing, that all officers of the organization, fraternity and sorority, uh, will be liable under reclusion perpetua and a fine of 3 million pesos. 
kapag nagkaroon ng hazing ang kanilang organisasyon o grupo, kahit hindi sila present. Subiri argues such tougher penalties would prevent further deaths due to hazing like what happened to UST law student Horacio Castillo III. Meanwhile, Senate Minority Leader Senator Franklin Drilon supports the move to amend the law. Ako, I recommend the total ban. The leader of the committee who handles the issue on hazing and any proposed legislations also support the position of former Senator Lina. Tama yung sinabi ni uh, Senator Lina. May magkakabacuum yun. Pag nirepeal mo, paano yung mga pending cases na nag apply doon yung, yung present law? Kasi remember, walang retroactive effect yung bagong batas. Pag nagpasa tayo, eh, hindi mag apply yun doon sa mga old cases. So may mga pending na kaso sa mga courts, maapektuhan yun. Kaya dapat hindi repeal, kundi amendment. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Meanwhile, the Manila Police District is still waiting for a resolution from the DOJ on whether or not to release John Paul Solano. Solano, meanwhile, insists his innocence in the hazing and death of Acho Castillo. Here's why from Victor Cosare. John Paul Solano's camp insists that they hold strong evidence to prove that he has no involvement in the hazing and death of law student Horacio Castillo III. Solano maintains he was not there when the initiation rite was executed. He claims he has been inactive from the AG's Juris Fraternity for some time. He was at home when someone called him to administer medical aid to Atyo. To file down for preliminary investigations. Doon ko na lalagay lahat ng affidavit ko, statements, sa mga CCTVs doon sa, ano, sa barangay namin. Kasi doon sa, sa barangay namin may CCTVs doon, tsaka sa neighbors namin. Nag-secure na kami ng copy. Solano said he decided to surrender to help shed light to the incident and seek justice for Castillo. Meanwhile, the Manila Police District is still awaiting the resolution of the Department of Justice on the case filed against Solano and 17 others. Whether uh, there is a probable cause to endorse the complaint or information uh, made by the Manila Police District to the court, or whether the respondent will be released for further investigation. Meanwhile, MPD sets to enter and check on the office of the Aegis Juris Fraternity in La Unlaan, Sampaloc, Manila. The police is awaiting the search warrant before they can enter and investigate on the crime scene. Victor Posare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. In other news, Malacanang ensures it will not redact pertinent information on the cost of real and personal properties in the Statement of Assets, Liabilities and Net Worth or SALN of the Cabinet members. Rosalie Cos tells us why. Malacanang did not deny that its records office made reductions or placed black markings on some of the information stated in the Statement of Assets, Liabilities and Net Worth or SALN of the Cabinet members of President Rodrigo Duterte. The Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism, or PCIJ, questioned the matter recently. PCIJ said it was an intensive reduction of pertinent information on the SAL end submitted by the former and present cabinet members as of December 31, 2016. According to PCIJ report, from the 29 SAL ends it investigated, 167 information were reducted. 28 SAL ends gave concealed personal properties. 24 have reductions on exact location of properties, while 23 SAL ends did not show the cost of real properties. Malacanang promises it will not redact pertinent information on the SAL end aside from sensitive and personal information. And uh, we learned also that uh, four out of the six SAL end uh, repository agencies do redact the names of the unmarried minor children and the uh, home address then uh, those will be redacted upon request. So the acquisition cost and the total uh, net worth, uh, the total uh, assets and the total liabilities uh, will, will be disclosed. The National Privacy Commission pointed out that it is the right of the public to know the cost of the properties of public officials in accordance to transparency and important information must not be concealed. The SAL and law, for instance, what is the required field? No? real property, assets, liabilities, and net worth. Even if you look at this through the Data Privacy Act, these are not sensitive personal information. Therefore, there is no restriction, hindrance, or there's no need to redact this information because they are information uh, that are covered by the law. 
the palace has mentioned before that it has made reductions to protect the right to privacy of the government officials. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. The Department of Social Welfare and Development, or DSWD, is asking for a 137 billion peso budget for 2018. This is a bit higher than its 128 billion peso budget for this year. Here's why, from Nel Maribojo. The DSWD plans to allocate a huge chunk of its 137 billion peso proposed budget to its flagship program, the Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Program, or the Four Ps. The four piece would get an 89 billion pesos allocation, while the DSWD also plans to allot 19 billion pesos for the monthly pension of poor senior citizens. This means that the number of senior citizens who might receive a 500 peso monthly pension might rise to 2.8 million. Ngayon po, nagiging standard na po ang senior citizens, compliant tayo doon sa anong standard na definition ng senior citizen. Uh, at 60 years old. And we anticipate na this year or next year, there will be a 7% increase. In the proposed budget, the DSWD allots 1.2 billion pesos for the subsidy from the tax reform package for the cash transfer program. According to DSWD officer in charge under Secretary Emmanuel Leiko, the said subsidy would be a huge help for the poor families who might be affected by the tax reforms the government plans to implement. At ito po ang aming uh, tinitingnan. Kung tumaas ang uh, presyo ng bilihin, bababa, masyado pong darami ang mga mahihirap. Kaya po natutuwa kami doon sa uh, tax reform na resolution na tataasan ang, uh, ang subsidy at gagawin pong uh, mas dahan-dahan. About 4.4 million families benefit from the four piece of the government. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The House of Representatives has approved on a third and final reading the 3.767 trillion peso general appropriations bill or GAB. This resource the original budget of the Energy Regulatory Commission and National Commission for Indigenous People, while the lower house cut the budget restored for the Commission on Human Rights. The lower house will now wait for the Senate to finish their deliberations on the proposed budget, after which they will begin the bicameral conference. Both houses of Congress target to submit the proposed budget to the President for his signature before the month of November ends. President Rodrigo Duterte strips Martin Dino of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority Chairmanship and appoints Wilma Isma as a new SBMA Chairman and Administrator. Rosalie Cost tells us why. President Rodrigo Duterte ends the conflict on the leadership of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority. This is through his order repealing the Executive Order No. 340, Series of 2004 of former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. The said EO has something to do with appointing two persons as chairman and administrator of the SBMA. Consequently, the SBMA chairmanship was stripped from Martin Dino, a known ally and supporter of President Duterte, while Wilma Esma remains administrator and new chairman of SBMA. The two offices have been conflated into one position. Into the two offices will be, uh, will be assumed by one person. Malacanang, on the other hand, refuses to divulge information if Dino will be appointed in a new government position. The presidential spokesperson also did not specify the current relations of Dino to President Duterte. How's the relations between the president and Dino? Uh, I wouldn't know. I'm sure so. I suppose civil. Meanwhile, Esma has taken her oath of office and will remain in the position until June 30, 2022. She admits it is a big challenge for her to take the lead for the economic zone but will do her best to fulfill her duties. Recently, there was confusion between the employees of SBMA because of different directives made by Dino and ESMA. Meanwhile, when asked about the reaction of former SBMA chairman Martin Dino, he thanked President Duterte and said he is happy but refused to tell the reason for his ouster. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> The Philippine National Police Highway Patrol Group and a transport network vehicle service company join forces in combating road crimes. Monokson tells us why. 
The Philippine National Police or PNP Highway Patrol Group recorded 10 crime cases involving the use of Transport Network Vehicle Service or TNVS units that serve as drug couriers. One of the cases involved a certain Jovit Atiliano who was arrested by the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency or PIDEA last September 19 at a condominium unit. PIDEA confiscated 1.4 million pesos worth of illegal drugs from his unit. So, uh, ginagamit nila yung grab taxi or uh, uh, doon nila binibigay yung, yung uh, illegal drugs or dangerous drugs at pinadideliver. The suspect involved in a bombing incident in Quiapo, Manila also used the service of TNVS unit to deliver the explosive in the area. The said incident killed two individuals and injured six others. Through a TNVS unit, the things of hazing Horacio Castillo III was delivered to his parents. With this, the PNP, HPG, and Grab Philippines entered into an agreement to prevent the use of TNVS units in such illegal activities. TNVS drivers will undergo trainings with the HPG so they could learn about anti-criminality, road crash responder, and road courtesy and traffic and safety laws. For us as uh, road enforcers, uh, iba yung training because uh, we have more uh, experience. Grab reminds its partner drivers to be cautious in accepting packages ordered to be delivered. We always remind our drivers to remain vigilant and uh, when, when uh, packages are being sent through the platform, they're, they're allowed to check open and check the packages uh, and refuse packages where the senders do not uh, allow them to see what's inside. TNVS driver Sunario Falconaya says he is already cautious in accepting deliveries as he always receives requests for such. The TNVS drivers will undergo a seminar once a week at the training center of the HPG. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. Next on Y News. Authorities investigate the cause of death of a member of the presidential security group inside his quarters in Malacanang. Charges are filed against three members of the Abu Sayyaf group and are arrested in Zamboanga City. Authorities fast-track investigation on the arrest and death of Vietnamese fishermen in Pangasinan. Y News will be right back. The former administrator of the Sugar Regulatory Administration maintains there is no irregularities in her hiring of consultants for the agency. Joan Nano tells us why. Attorney Annie Paner belies allegations of irregularities in her hiring of consultants for the Sugar Regulatory Administration or SRA during her term as administrator. Paner said President Rodrigo Duterte was misinformed about the issue that she paid 200,000 pesos monthly to the consultant she hired when she was the chief of SRA. She explains the SRA hired consultants for the creation of a disaster risk reduction and management plan for the sugarcane industry, which they would pay 1.2 million pesos within six months. Paner says the hiring underwent proper procedure and was approved by the agency's board members. That contract they were referring to, like any other entered into by SRA, went through the regular process and was cleared by the concerned managers. The agency also hired three more sub-consultants and were paid with 52000 each for the said project. I believe in pay paying people fairly. But I also believe na yung mga i-hire dapat, hindi yung consultants na nangangape. Pero yung may deliverables naman, may timeline. In this case, hindi naman ho to continuing na consultancy. It was only for a period of six months and they had to deliver within six months, which they did. The former official insists that she performed her duties well and denies any involvement in corruption in the SRA. I did not gain anything 
from any contracts that SRA entered into, including for this lead consultant. Paner says it was on the 12th of August when she submitted a resignation letter to President Rodrigo Duterte, whom she said accepted yesterday. She notes she is no longer happy with her job and is being affected by the controversies hurled against her. It was on the 18th of September when President Rodrigo Duterte announced his firing of Paner for her hiring of consultants. Malacanang has yet to issue a comment on the new statement of Paner. Joan Ano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The commander of the Presidential Security Group says it is still early to conclude on the cause of death of one of their colleagues who was found dead this morning. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. Presidential Security Group Commander Brigadier General Lope Dagoy ruled out foul play in the death of Major General Harim Gonzaga this morning at his quarters in Malacanang. The commander added that Gonzaga did not show signs of struggle. Major Gonzaga was found dead with a gunshot wound in his chest. Gonzaga's Norinco caliber 45 was found beside him. The scene of the crime operatives are Soko is still investigating on the reason behind his death. Gonzaga was assigned in the operations section of PSG. He has two children. His wife is also a member of the presidential escorts. Dagui says the wife of Gonzaga told him about her husband's difficulties in his workload. Nung kausap ko yung wife, uh, in fact, naabutan ko hysterical pa siya. So I was trying to settle her down. Uh, tinanong ko siya, ano bang problema ninyo? Meron ba? Uh, sabi niya, wala naman sir. Ang sinasabi lang niya, uh, yung workload niya, uh, madami. So, normal lang naman sa amin yun. Eh, nasa PSG ka eh. Well, I, I, don't, I don't think it's a reason for him to, you know, to take his life para lang trabaho. PSG confirmed that President Rodrigo Duterte is already in Malacanang when the incident happened and he was informed about it. President Duterte is staying at Bahay Pangarap, which is far from where the incident happened. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. The three suspected members of the Abu Sayyaf group arrested in Zamboanga City last week are now facing multiple charges. Rajal Adora will tell us why. Authorities have filed multiple charges against the three suspected members of the Abu Sayyaf group arrested in Zamboanga City last Saturday, September 23rd. Omar Azakil, Abdullah Sapi'i, and Bukaram Sapi'i are facing charges for violating comprehensive firearms law and the RA-9516 or illegal possession of explosive that have a penalty of reclusion perpetua or life imprisonment. Nalbailable ko ito kasi kung meron kang possession, ng isang explosive, lalo na na nakunan sila ng fragmentation grenade. Authorities also discovered that one of the suspects, Mukaram Sapi, has a standing warrant of arrest for a frustrated murder case. Meanwhile, the police are still searching for another suspected member of the ACG identified as Kadil Asalin, who is also facing kidnapping charges. The three suspects are detained at the Oanga City Police Office Detention Facility. In line with this, the Philippine National Police vows to further tighten the security in the area. Authorities are waiting for the camp of the suspects to request for them to be transferred to other detention facility. The Zamboanga PNP notes that the suspect might have caused chaos in the city if they were not immediately arrested. Well, if they plan to rescue or to do, do some uh, foolishness, it will be at their own risk. Aside from sa amin, meron tayong task force sa buwang ka dyan. Mahirapan din sila pumasok rito. Rajal Adora, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Meanwhile, authorities are mulling to file multiple charges against Juanito Tayag, the owner of JC Tayag Builders, the private contractor of the Yolanda Housing Project in Eastern Samar. This after the members of the House Committee on Housing and Urban Development discovered that his company used substandard materials in the construction of more than 2,000 housing units of the Yolanda Housing Project. The lawmakers also questioned the snail-paced construction of the government housing units. Aside from perjury, the lawmakers are also studying the possibility of filing other multiple charges against Tayag. Definitely there is breach of contract. We are now studying the the angle of uh, syndicated estafa.
The Commission on Elections, or COMELEC, regrets spending 600 million pesos in preparation for the supposed October polls this year. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The Commission on Elections has spent over 600 million pesos for the printing of election ballots and voters' list for the supposed Barangay and Sangguni Angkabatan elections in October. The poll body regrets spending such huge amount after the lower and upper houses of Congress approves the proposed poll postponement which is now waiting the signature of President Rodrigo Duterte. The Comelec and Bank has decided to maintain the election preparations on status quo. Ikatutuwa ng Comelec itong uh, bagong development na ito. No? Uh, particular dahil ngayon lang natin nakikitaan uh, ng uh, talagang clarity yung sitwasyon. Uh, however, the, the fact that the postponement is coming barely a month before the actual election means that nasa kalagitnaan na tayo ng mobilization ng, ng, ng komisyon. Around 50 million ballots have been printed. Nevertheless, Comelec is relieved that from now on, they can clearly plan for their next steps in preparation for the 2018 polls. Example nung kailangan ulitin, yung tiyatawag nating Project of Precincts. Yung POP, Eh, basically, listahan yan ng mga butante sa iba't ibang presinto. Dahil na postpone tayo, it appears na kakailangan na natin mag-restart ng continuing registration. It means, dadami pa lalo yung butante mo. So, kailangan, i-rework -re mo ngayon yung tiyatawag na Project of Precincts. Meanwhile, the Legal Network for Truthful Elections, or Lente, appeals for the President to veto the legislature's decision. Well, ngayon ang iniintay na lang ay signature ng ating Presidente, pero kung pwede pang i-veto ng ating Presidente yung decision ng ating legislature, legislature kami ay nakikiusap sa ating Presidente na wag nang permahan at ituloy na yung barangay elections. Dahil kailangan mapaltan yung mga barangay officials na yan. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Comelec Chairman Andres Bautista's wife Patricia has filed a disbarment complaint against UST Law Dean Nilo Divina and 20 other lawyers. Mrs. Bautista was accompanied by her lawyer attorney Lorna Kapunan. The complaint stemmed from the alleged referral fees for election cases Chairman Bautista received from Divina Law Firm. Divina says they have yet to read the complaint but insisted they have always acted in accordance with law and ethical demands of the law profession. He said they will respond to the complaint once they receive it. He adds that the complainant is probably sour after the dismissal of their impeachment complaint against Chairman Bautista. A Philippine task group is expected to release at the soonest possible time the result of its investigation into the deaths of two Vietnamese fishermen and the rest of five others in the West Philippine Sea. Aiko Miguel tells us why. The Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, or BFAR, is conducting an inventory of the boats used by the Vietnamese fishermen caught illegally fishing in the Sea of Bulinao, Pangasinan last Saturday. After the inventory, the Criminal Investigation and Detection Group, or CIDG, is set to get a sworn statement from the arrested fishermen who are now under the custody of the Philippine Coast Guard. The Provincial Committee on Illegal Entrance orders the Philippine Navy to submit an apprehension report about the encounter of some of its personnel with the Vietnamese fishermen. It also requests for the results of the autopsy report conducted by the scene of the crime operatives or SOCO on the two fatalities and the medical legal of the PNP Bolinao where the fishermen were turned over. According to the Deputy Provincial Police Community Relation of Pangasinan, the entire members of the task group are now working on the case for its immediate resolution. It actually mabilis na nga po itong ginagawa natin proseso sir. Nandiyan na po naka, naka tasking na po. Uh, yung chairman po natin, si Provincial Director po namin, si Ronald Lee, uh, sir, Senior Superintendent Ronald Lee, yun na po yung tinasking niya po lahat. So gumagalaw na po lahat yung mga nakatask po lahat dyan. So lahat po pagkatapos nun po, consolidate po yung mga reports natin regarding dyan. And then after that, saka po natin na ano, what, ano, how, anong nangyari, yan po. Yun po yung bibigay namin po sa inyo. Pag natapos na po yun sir. Practice kahit pa paano sir, hindi magulo po yung ating uh, investigation natin. Prior to this, Malacanang and Foreign Affairs Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano assured of a fair and thorough investigation into the deaths of the two Vietnamese fishermen. 
embassy officials are now working on the repatriation to Vietnam of the remains of the two fatalities. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Some Filipinos in Hawaii expressed concern over the escalating tension between the United States and North Korea. Cherry Pama will tell us why. Filipinos living in Hawaii have mixed reactions over the nuclear threat by North Korea. For now, the state of Hawaii continues to prepare for any calamity and for the threat of a nuclear attack by North Korea. Now that Pyongyang is engaged in a heated argument with U.S. President Donald Trump, we don't like the fact that that um, we're probably within range of his missiles, mm -hmm. but we have a responsibility to the people of Hawaii to prepare, and that's what we're doing. Hawaii officials are not discounting the possibility that a missile of North Korea might reach the state when it pushes through with firing a nuclear-armed missile, according to Toby Claremont. The Executive Officer of Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, or EMA, the state's National Guard is prepared for any eventuality. Claremont explains the strategy of Hawaii called the 14-day preparedness, which is launched during times of calamities or nuclear attack. We are the most remote populated island group in the world, so that means that we have to play with the resources at hand. So we put a lot of emphasis on helping the public, the individuals, the families, and the businesses think about what they need to do to prepare. And largely, they need to be prepared for about 14 days. They have to have food, medicines, need to be able to take care of their pets. Uh, the family members need to know where to go and, and, and what to do. Meanwhile, amid the possible danger North Korea poses to the United States, the situation in Hawaii remains business as usual, including that of the Filipino community. Cherry Pama, UNTV News and Rescue, Hawaii, USA. The winning composition for the month of August in this season of ASOP TV has already been recorded and prepares for the grand finals in November. Leslie Lung Bowen will tell us why. Of year six grand finalist composer Jessan May Mirador is glad to hear her song being recorded for the upcoming ASOP album. Jessan says she can hardly believe her song You're All I Need will reach the grand finals after being given a second chance when chosen in the ASOP producer's pick episode. Na amazed lang ako kung yung kay Lord na amazed lang ako sa ano niya sa kung paano niya yung yung plano niya kung baga. May rason din yun kung bakit ako nat natalo sa monthly. Yun, mas na-improve yung kanta, di ba? The August monthly winner says she came up with the song because of the painful experiences she had overcome. She hopes her song will motivate others who are also undergoing problems. Nakompose ko to nung mga panahon na uh, marami rin mga pinagdadaanan. Sa family, ganyan. Kasi sunod-sunod din yung mga nawala sa family member. As in, sa isang taon, parang tatlo sila. Tsaka syempre sa life ko din, na hindi lahat uh, umaayon sa plinano ko. 2016 Awit Awards Best New Female Recording Artist Chris Angelica will interpret Jessen's song for the grand finals. Chris Angelica felt great working with Dr. Musico Doc Monde Rosario because apart from learning much from him, she says the song entry was enhanced. Ang saya, ang sarap sa feeling na natuturuan niya ako kung ano yung dapat kong gawin, kung paano ko i-apply yung mga style. Meanwhile, ASOP team traveled to one of the most popular tourist destinations in the country, Tagaytay City, to shoot the song's music video. Leslie Longboen, UNTV, News and Rescue, Philippines. Coming up on Y News. Japan Prime Minister Shinzo Abe announces to dissolve parliament and calls for a snap election in October. 
Dubai starts testing a bid to become the first city with flying taxis. And the NHA builders gears up for a heart-pounding action against Pidea drug busters tomorrow. More from Y News after this break. Determined NHA builders gears up for a match against Pidea Drug Boosters or Busters rather tomorrow. Bernard Dadis will tell us why. Next time, Mabawi. This was the promise of NHA builders head coach Silberio Bennett Pala III after experiencing a loss from Malacanang PSE Kamao last September 17. Towards the end of the game against the Kamao, the builders on the hardwood seemed to have loosened their defense and offense. Hence, the Kamao side was able to clinch the lead and then the win, 92-90. Kumpiyansa sila, yung momentum na punta na sa kanila. Bago kami nakarecover, wala na. Diba? It's too late na. That is why for Coach Bennett, Getting up mentally is far more important than physical preparation. This time as they face the Pedea Drug Busters on Wednesday. Preparation ko para sa next game, siguro mentally na muna. Siguro ay papaalam ko lang sa kanila kung uh, to protect the ball. Both the builders and the drug busters presently have one loss and no win. The UNTB Cup crowd can also expect an adamant Pidea team led by former professional basketball players big man Marlon Basco and guard Robert Sanz. The Builders Drug Busters match will take place at 2 in the afternoon at the Pasig City Sports Center and will be aired on Sunday, October 1. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Those are the reasons behind the news, September 26, 2017. I'm Angelo Castro III. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am William Theo. And I'm Darlene Basingan because we need to know... We will always ask why. Thank you for watching. Why, why News? news?